all right hello everyone and welcome to chemistry class and our topic for today is gas law well we started off from boys law child's law the general gas equation and um, Dalton's law of partial pressure so today we'll be continuing from where we stopped and i hope you still remember what has been taught so i told you in the last class that we're going to look into a worked example of the Dalton's law of partial pressure in this class so let's continue so you recall that for Dalton's law of partial pressure we said that p total is equals to p a plus p b plus p c and um, we have that in case where we have that in cases where the gas is um, was collected where the gas was collected over water we said that p total will be equals to p gas plus what p water vapor right so i hope you remember that so let's look at a work example a certain mass of hydrogen gas collected over water at six degrees celsius and 765 millimeter mercury pressure as a volume of 35 centimeter cube calculate the volume when it is dry at stp yeah so svp svp means standard vapor pressure of water at six degrees celsius is equal to seven millimeter mercury all right so um now there are things you should note when interpreting questions now this says that the gas was collected over water so that means the formula we'll be using is p total is equals to p gas plus p water vapor and in this question we're looking for volume where we have we actually have v1 and we have p1 and we also have temperature so that means we'll be using the general gas equation but before we can forge ahead to look to look for volume we also have to find the pressure of the gas so we have p gas is equal to p so um to get the actual volume the um rather to get the actual pressure of the gas we are going to make p we're going to make p gas the subject of the formula from the Dalton's law of pressure pressure so we have p gas is equal to p total minus p water vapor so at six degrees celsius the total volume was 765 millimeter mercury and we have that um, the vapor pressure of water at 6 degrees Celsius is 7 millimeter mercury. So we deduct that to give us 758 millimeter mercury. So we have our pressure, which is our P1. Then our T1 is 6 degrees Celsius. We convert it to Kelvin by adding 273 Kelvin and we arrive at 279 Kelvin. Our V1 is 35 cm cube. Now recall that the question ends with calculate the volume when it is dry at stp so what is stp i hope you remember that that is standard temperature and what pressure and standard temperature is what 273 kelvin while pressure is 760 millimeter mercury now don't get confused the question is ending with at stp so that that means our new volume that's going to be v2 uh, or rather p2 our new pressure p2 the new temperature t2 in questions where it starts with at sp where the question starts with at stp we're going to have that as p1 but if it ends with you know like you know we're having the question say calculate the volume when it is dry at stp so it ends with at stp so that's going our uh, p2 will be 760 millimeter mercury t2273 kelvin i hope you understand that so using the general gas equation and making v2 the subject of the formula we just insert our figures 758 times 35 times 273 divided by 760 divided by 279 which gives us 34.2 centimeter cubes centimeter cube rather which means that the volume of the gas at stp is 34.2 centimeter cube easy peasy so you just go over that again it's very easy then we move to the ideal gas equation ideal gas equation pv is equals to nrt where R is a constant termed as the molar gas equation. P is in atmosphere. That's another unit for, me for measuring pressure. We have a lot of units for measuring pressure. I hope you know. We have um, Pascal. We have atmosphere. We have Newton per meter square. We have millimeter mercury. So we have here yeah, P is in atmosphere. V is in densimeter cube. 
t is in kelvin and n is number of mole of gases so at standard temperature and pressure for one mole of gas uh, r is equals to 0 0.082 atmosphere decimeter cube per kelvin per mole so this is a constant figure it is constant and it does not change for a warm, for one mole of gas at stp all right so let's look at a worked example here it's, <coughs> sorry a certain amount of gas occupies 5.0 decimeter cube at two atmosphere and 10 degrees celsius calculate the number of moles present so in this question we are looking for what n we are looking for n we have p to be two atmosphere we have v to be 5.0 decimeter cube we have r our constant is already we already know that is 0.082 and we have our t to be 10 degrees celsius here we're going to convert it to kelvin and i hope you remember how to convert celsius to kelvin is by adding 273 so we inserting our figures we have n is equals to 2 times 5.0 divided by 0.082 divided by 283 which gives us is 0 0.431 moles so that's very easy in other questions you may be asked to you may be given the number of moles that you may be asked to calculate the pressure or the volume or the temperature but we always have r given r is a constant all right so let's move to gay lusak's law gay lusak's law well, gay lussac's law describes the combining volumes of gases that react together. In his experiment, all temperature and pressure were kept constant. So, gay lussac's law of combining volumes states that when gases react, gases react when they do so. They, when they react, they do so in volumes which are simple ratio to one another and to the volumes of the product if gaseous, provided that the temperature and pressure remains constant. Note some words in gay lussac's law. Temperature and pressure must remain constant, and those gas and those um, gases must be the volumes of the of their product must be gaseous. All must be gaseous. So now, when we have an example here, what is the volume of oxygen required to burn completely for the five cm cube of methane, which is CH four? So we have we have to get the equation of the reaction. This is a combustion reaction. So we have CH four plus two mole of oxygen gas. Every all everything is in gaseous state will give us CO2 carbon four oxide plus two mole of water. So here we have one volume of methane requires two volume of oxygen. And how do we know that? You will notice that in methane, look at the methane and the oxygen is what we call the reactant side, while the CO2 and the water is what we call product, is what we get from the reaction of methane and oxygen so now look at the methane it's not carrying any number in front of it so we call that one molecule so we and gilizak said that when gases combine they do so in volume so uh, one molecule will mean one volume and look at that of oxygen is two molecules so that means two volumes so we have one volume of methane requires two volumes of what oxygen so that's for this for this equation that standard that one volume of methane will require two volume of oxygen so the question says that what's the volume of oxygen that we need to burn completely for the five cm cube of methane so if one volume of methane will require two for volume of oxygen 45 require many 45 times 2 which is 90 centimeter cube of oxygen i hope that's quite explanatory then we move to avogadro's law avogadro put forward a hypothesis that explained gay lussac's law satisfactorily avogadro's law states that equal volume of all gases at the same temperature and pressure that means temperature and pressure being constant contains the same number of molecules so the difference is avogadro is just using molecules while gay lussac is using volume so just as a dozen of egg represent 12 eggs a mole of substance represents 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 particle of any number. This is a standard number. And this experimentally determined number, 6.02 times 10 to the power 23, is called Avogadro's number. It does not change 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. So in this question, we have how many molecules are there in 4 moles of glucose? So according to Avogadro's law, one... Um, one mole of glucose is 6.02 times 10 to the power 3. So, four moles of glucose would be 4 times 6.02 times 10 to the power 
times 10 raised to the power 23, which gives us 24.08 times 10 raised to the power 23 molecules of gases. All right, and um, we move to Graham's law of diffusion. Well, Graham's law of diffusion states that at constant temperature and pressure, the rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of its density. So the rate is inversely proportional to the square root of its density. Well, so we have um, R1 over R2 is equal to the density of of the second gas and the density of the first gas. That's row 2 over row 1. That sign is called row 2 over row 1. It's a Greek letter. So where R1 and R2 are the rate of diffusion and R1 and, and row 1 and row 2 are the densities of the two gases at constant temperature and pressure, the rate of diffusion. Okay, sorry, at the density of the two gases. So yeah, we also we can also relate it to the molecular mass. So at constant temperature and pressure, the rate of diffusion of gas is also inversely proportional to the square root of its relative molecular mass. So it's not just only to um, it's not only to the density, but also to the square root of the molecular mass. Hope you get that. All right, then um, we are uh, summary. Here is um, PV is equal to nRT, where R is a constant termed the molar gas equation, and R is a constant which is 0 0.082 atmosphere decimeter cube per Kelvin per mole. Then the Lussac's law of combining volume state that when gases react, they do so in volumes which are simple ratio to one another, and to the volumes of the product, if gaseous provided it that temperature and pressure remains constant, we have 6.02 times 10 to 23 as our Avogadro's number. All right, so we have this take-home question for you to do at home. How many atoms are contained in two grams of hydrogen gas? Two seven centimeter cube of carbon four oxide recollected over water at 14 degrees celsius and 782 millimeter mercury pressure calculate the volume of the dry gas at s tip well the standard vapor pressure of water at 15 degrees celsius to be 12 millimeter mercury then under the same condition of temperature and pressure hydrogen diffuses eight times as fast as the gas why calculate the relative molecular mass of y and we have a relative molecular mass of hydrogen to be 12. So this grams law of diffusion. So using the formula, you just insert the figures. All right. Thank you for today's class. I hope you learned something new.